Back on our Datsun again. Okay, 72 Datsuns you can see. Full Roadster, tops cut off this thing. We've got it back half, laying rockers on 20 by 12s right now. We've got the front Fat Man fabrication suspension all welded in. And we've measured for wheels and tires. I got the front wheels ordered. So what we need to do now is cut the firewall, see if we can get that tire tucked up into there. We still need to cut the fins on our oil pan. We gotta graft the frame rails together toward the rear where we narrow those front frame rails. So there's a lot left to do. We're gonna see what we can get to today. But right now we're gonna get started with uh, cutting the firewall, tuck some tire in there. Let's get it. All right, so I've just got the control arms blocked up right now. I'm letting the jack down. So all the weight's going onto the lower control arm. We're gonna lower it until the tire just starts to touch the firewall. Give us a good idea where we need to start making some cuts. All right, looks good. Pretty good for a rough cut, so what I'm gonna try to do is leave roughly an inch clearance all the way around if possible. There's not a lot of room to work with here, but I'm pretty close to that right now. Take a little more out of the top. I'm gonna end up tubing this upper structure where the fender bolt's on, that way it'll be strong there because there's obviously not a lot of metal there now, but I still have a little bit I can cut away from that. And inside, we need to take a little more. Um, our camber, as it sits down, you get a negative camber. The tops of the tires start to tilt in toward the engine. So we just need to make sure we've got plenty of room there so we don't get into anything. And at ride height, just putting it up there real quick and turning the wheel, it looks like we're pretty good all the way around on our clearances. So I'd say that's pretty good. We're gonna clean up the edges, make a few more cuts, and then hop over to the other side and see if we can get that one cut out. But before we get over there, I gotta stick the fender on. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Man, I'm so glad we're able to get an 18 under there. Man, that looks cool. I really like this thing.
we've got all that cut out. Now, these are the wheels we're gonna run on something else. I showed those the last time we worked on the Datsun. They're not the right backspace, but they'll work to make this a roller because we'll be waiting a while on our wheels for the front. So, at least we'll be able to move it around. I mean, really rough. Just thinking about maybe doing a video down the road on repairing this thing instead of finding one. <laughs> Definitely seen better days. Still looks bitching though. All right, so that looks cool. We need to fit the engine now. So I'm gonna set the engine over in here, just see what kind of clearance we gain. I know we're still gonna have to cut those fins and that still may not be enough, but I'm gonna get, get this, shh, gonna get this fender off, get it jacked up a little bit, see if we can just set it over in with the hoist. All right, so without putting an angle finder or anything on that, just these two gadgets right here, looks roughly like that's where the engine would sit into the truck. So as we do this, obviously we're gonna find more things. Now we've lowered the cross member and the next thing I was gonna do is cut the fins on the oil pan, which we've talked about, which would give us about another inch and a half. Now one thing I'm seeing now that I've got it in here is we need to bolt the rack up because it looks like the lower we get with the engine, obviously we're gonna get closer to the rack. And I think where we are right now, not even cutting the fins, we might be too tight. So um, our option here might end up having to be a dry sump and there might not be any point of cutting those off. So I'm gonna yank the engine back out. Let's bolt the rack onto the cross member, set the engine back in there and see where it's gonna be. Also, the shaft coming out of the rack, I think is gonna be right into the oil pan. So we might end up dropping the oil pan and see where the pickup is on it and if we can modify that oil pan, but it's starting to look like just the easiest route to take would be a dry sump. I did a quick search on uh, dry sump pans and they are out there for an Ecotech and I've, I've seen a lot of guys uh, recommend them. Problem is, I cannot find where to buy one. So, that could be a problem. But, let's yank it back out of here. We'll bolt the rack on and we'll just see. Thanks. All right, so you can see with the engine sitting in here, definitely got a problem. So our factory oil pan, obviously not gonna work. It's sitting right on top of the rack right now. And then that is the steering shaft coming out of the rack. But if you look closely, if I can get in here, right here, that's where the starter bolts on. So the starter sticks back toward the front of the truck, which looks like it would get right into the shaft of that rack which definitely is a problem. And I do want to try to run the rack and pinion. So we're going to try to see if we can figure this out. Now we have a couple of options, the dry sump like we were talking about, but I did forget about something that I mentioned the last time I worked on the Datsun. These Ecotechs are huge in Miata swaps. And I'd found a company out there that was building an oil pan that basically moves the tank of the pan toward the front of the engine. It actually overhangs the engine by a lot and roughly three quarters of the back of the engine is just a flat pan. Now, I've tried to get in touch with those guys and I haven't had much luck, but if I can get one of those pans or maybe we fabricate one, which 
is that's doable if we need to go that route that would allow us to move the engine back in the truck if we move the engine back that's going to get the starter hopefully far enough away from that shaft that maybe we can double d that up to our column um, this is one of those things that we just kind of have to figure it out as we go because there's nothing out there to go off of um, so that's what i'm leaning toward i'm gonna right now i'm gonna act as if we're running that pan that they use in the Miata swaps because I think that's the right route to go. We have the room up front to use that and it just seems like that makes sense. So what I think I'm gonna do for right now, just to see if we can get this a little further along since we're not gonna cut the fins off the pan, is I'm gonna pull the engine back out again. I'm gonna pull the pan off of it and then we're gonna stick the engine back in here and see what it's looking like then because that's gonna be close to what we would be working with. So let's yank this out, get the pan off, see what we've got when we sit it back in. And the reason I'm trying to get this part of it done right now, I do have the transmission ordered. We're going with the 5L40E. That would have come in the Pontiac Solstice or the Saturn Sky. Those were the rear wheel drive cars. Now most of these Ecotecs were front wheel drive stuff, but there's also the manual trans out of the Solstice and the Sky as well. But I've had a ton of transmission questions. But we're taking the truck down to Carfix to film it on there we're going to do a few things and i need the engine and the trans mounted in the truck so hopefully the trans shows up in time we can get this oil pan figured out so i can be as far as we need to be but let's yank this thing off Okay, so with the pan off, uh, you can see the pickup tube that's down in the pan. We've got the oil pump that's in the front of the engine. You can see the passage here going up to the pump. That's connecting to the pickup tube, and that's where it's picking up the oil from the pan, pumping through the engine, keeping everything lubricated. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But without diving too much into that Miata oil pan, I've not really researched it, but this helps me to see, I believe, what's going on. So that oil pan starts at about right here on the engine and extends way up front. So what that's telling me is you're just able to flip that pickup tube into the front where that tank would be you're still able to use the same pump and everything and still lubricate the engine and from here back it's just pretty much a flat pan so we're going to very carefully set this engine over into the truck now the only reason we're doing this is to make sure that a dry sump pan or that miata pan is even going to work before we get that far and the only way we're going to know that is to set it in like this because our pan's only going to be down another inch or two as opposed to our factory pan that's hanging down this far and this will help me to see if this is all going to work uh, once we do that we're going to pull it right back out and stick this oil pan right back on it to keep everything protected in there so we'll see if we can set it in and hopefully <laughs> hopefully it's going to look like all this is going to work i'm feeling pretty good about that i feel a lot better about it all right, so we're up in the front a little bit still, but it's not bad. We are down in the rear, and if you look across the fenders, everything's looking pretty good, but we still need to go back. The firewall's in it, so when we go back, that's gonna help because the fenders, the truck kind of pitches up as it goes back, but you can check out down here now. With no pan on it, we were able to drop a lot further, and that might be just a hair lower than we can go, but it's pretty close. Everything's clearing, but once we get a new pan, we'll see if we need to make any adjustments there. See, I'm feeling better about that. It's not going to be as involved, I don't believe, and I do think everything's going to work out. I still think worst case scenario if we have to build a cowl on the hood just to clear a little bit, but we'll see once we get it further back and actually get a pan, because this is just kind of giving us an idea if this will work. We don't know for sure until we actually have everything bolted onto the engine, and we can start actually figuring out real clearances when we build our engine mounts but this does make me feel a little better about it so if you look over here on the passenger side we're going to run a traditional bag so i've got plates cut 
a lower plate's going to weld to the lower control arm for the bottom of the bag, and then we're going to have another plate coming off of the frame rail, and that's what's going to give us our adjustability in the suspension. Um, but if you see on Fat Man's front suspension, they sent us one that would accept a coilover. This would be the upper bracket right here, or you could run an air strut. You can see our turbo starting to get into that right now. And since I want to push the engine further back, we're just going to get into that even more. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of those since we're not going to need them. So we'll cut those out of the way and then see if we have time for anything else. We'll stick the oil pan back on real quick. So I've got those cut out of the way. I'm not gonna plate them just yet. We still might have to cut more, um, but that had to go anyway just to be able to do more fitment checks and be able to get everything where we want it. Uh, I hate we didn't get to cut the oil pan. I mean, I guess we still could have cut the fins on the oil pan, but there's no point in it. Just gonna show you what we use. Cause you know, at the shop, we do everything in house. We don't outsource anything. So I think we're pretty efficient at just about everything we're doing. We've come up with good ways to do it. We've tried just about everything. Uh, but when I cut aluminum, I use these benchmark abrasive aluminum cutoff wheels. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything. I've never even talked to them before, but um, I see a lot of people still use the stainless and steel cut off wheels to cut aluminum they kind of gum up and slick over these things are fairly inexpensive and man do they cut through some aluminum quick so if you're doing any aluminum cutting i was definitely going to show you those i'll link them below but hey that's all we got to today but like i said holiday weekend kind of want to go spend some time with the family we still got to get to the mustang but i'm trying to get this thing ready for car fix so i think the next step if we get on this thing next week, I hope is gonna be trying to get the bags under the front of it, see if we can just get it airing up and down on its own, that way we can move it. And then we still need to get the four link in the back. We still need to do the rocker panels. We need to build floors. We need to do firewall. We need to blah, 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 blah. We got like a year's worth of doing left to do. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.